Hi everyone, this is Chetan Nayak. So this video is a quick demonstration of how uh, stack spoofing should look like. I thought that there aren't a lot of videos or blogs which actually explain what stack spoofing or spoofing of the stack frames should look like. Most people are confused with just spoofing the return addresses, but that's not how it should look like. So this video is a quick demonstration of the same as to understanding how um, a legitimate stack looks like and to make sure that we are able to replicate it uh, as to what we'll be taking a look at with brute retail. So over here, uh, we have process hacker. So when I search for a process, something like explorer.exe, for example, bad. So, okay, so uh, you see that there are several threads that are actively running into this specific process. Let's say you open one of these threads, you would see what the actual stack would look like. So you can see that the stack over here has correct unwinding information. Similarly, if you go to any other thread, you would see the exactly same values. If you see any other value over here, apart from the legitimate uh, uh, API calls, which are backed by DLLs, that most likely means that the stack is not unwinding properly, which also means that the, the stack values that are there, it might contain garbage, which most likely might have pushed by a shell code or a process injection by reflective DLL. And this is currently where the instruction pointer, that's the first value that you see over here, reside. Which means uh, currently this specific thread is waiting on ZW, wait for multiple objects. And similarly, if you go to other threads, it would be different. But it should always be something like this. If it is unbacked by a DLL, uh, which is unbacked by any legitimate API call, it means that the stack is not unwinding properly, or it means basically that it is some injected process. Now, it's not always true, I would say. Uh, and the reason for that is because uh, a lot of time, just in time compiled programs do have hex values over here, uh, basically the values which are pushed to stack, and they may not necessarily have correct unwinding information. But that's not always there for all the programs. It's only for a few programs uh, that are currently there, things like MS Edge and a lot of other things. Not a lot, I would say, a few other uh, programs on Windows. But when you're doing Red Teams, you might not always inject into Explorer uh, uh, or your uh, Internet Explorer or Edge or something else. In such scenarios, you would have to explicitly inject into some legitimate looking application. It can be a SAP application that you are in which you want to inject during runtime or something else during your Red Team engagements, which means you have to make sure that your stack looks legitimate. If it does not, then any threat hunter who knows about how stack spoofing works or can simply take a look at the unwinding information that is apart from what it would look like in memory. If you have unbacked Rx memory regions, over here you will see a few Rx regions, but all of these are basically private commit which map back to a legitimate base address. If you see any unbacked memory regions which are not mapped to any legitimate base addresses, or if you see threads over here starting with incorrect start addresses, or if you see some stack information which is not unwinding properly, all of these are possibilities that it might be shell code which is turning, and the threat hunter can inspect further using a debugger to see how exactly what kind of shell code it is running or what exactly that specific thread is doing. So uh, let's take a look at how stack would look like when you're using brute retail. So over here, let me quickly start the release that we have. And let me open up. So this is a wide screen, so it will just span up way too wide. Okay, so uh, we'll quickly uh, create a default payload and then we will also take a look at how a staged, uh, not a staged, uh, basically a shell code would also look like. So the payload is now saved. So this payload is nothing but uh, an assembly code which is converted to your exe itself, uh, that's your shell code itself. We'll also take a look at how actual uh, shell code would look like when it's injected to a different process. So I'll execute this and let's see if we have our badger running. Perfect. Let's see if we go back, you can see that we have a connection here. You can see the thread ID is 12076 and we have PID which is 6584. If I go back here, you can see this is the PID 6584 and the thread that we are searching for is 12076. If you take a look at the thread 12076, as you can see, 
the stack thread is totally legitimate. However, if I put this to sleep zero, for example, things would change over here quickly. As you can see, we have these hex values which means the stack are not, it's not properly getting unwinded. If I go back to let's say sleep five, which means it is, so whenever it goes to sleep, it basically modifies how the stack should look like. So when you're doing red team engagement, you might want to keep longer sleep time so that it's not totally in an unwinded um, area. So let me go back, refresh, and you can see it works. Uh, it also works with other sleeping techniques. As you might already know that we have more than one sleeping techniques over here. If I do sleep OBF, OBF sleep one, if I go back, if I refresh, and you can see that the values have changed over here again. If I go back, if I do OBF sleep 2, and if I do a refresh, you can see again the values are correct itself over here. Now let's open up another process. So this is Notepad, which I have started in a quick debugger. Let me close this and this. Let me search for Notepad. Our PID is 8948. So we will quickly create another shell code over here. I'll copy this and type sh inject x. Our address was, sorry, the PID was 8948, 8948 and badger underscore x64. Let's see, uh, as you can see, we have received a shell which I will load it in a adjacent tab. Let me zoom it up a bit. I'll go back and yeah, let me just put it to a decent sleep value. Let's say sleep five. Our third ID, as you can see, is 3160. 3160. As you can see, uh, even this region that we have over here, 3160, even that one is uh, currently backed by a legitimate start address unless um, unlike something like 0x00 or something else in that case. If I go to memory region, there should not be any unbacked Rx regions. As you can see, the Rx region starts here and it ends here. So there is not a single unbacked Rx region. And let's take a look at our 3160 thread stack. And you can see that 3160 is what we have. And it has legitimate stack unwinding information. So basically this is a quick example as to how stack unwinding should work. Only the return address should not be uh, having a stack winding information. The full stack should be having a correct unwinding information like this. Your frames should be managed properly. So yes, this is a quick uh, information about how stack unwinding would look like and that would be all for this video.